everyone welcome to another video from speed engineering located in Germany today we will not not talk about this beautiful 997 GT2 but we will talk about the Supra and uh, we will talk about the topic bump steer Toyota Supra the car is undrivable but in the meantime I also want to show you very quick um, a little update of the uh, EV conversion of our series on BMW by the way while we are standing here this GT2 already got an uh, aero kit from us. The customer wanted, sorry, it's a little bit loud. The customer wanted this wing to be a little bit higher and also wanted another flap. And this is what we uh, designed for him and manufactured it. Uh, it's a one off production. And now he will get some Recaro podium seats and he will get the full package of sensor kits which we are developing right now. So this means that the display, the OEM display from Porsche, will remove it and put in our own touch display with sensors for monitoring the brake disc temperatures, the differential oil temperature, um, the gearbox, um, oil pressure. No, I think the car already has oil pressure and all that stuff. But we will show it in a separate video. Before we come to our main actor or the main actress, this is a very short update about our Series 1 BMW EV conversion. If you don't know what I'm talking about right now, this car will be will, will get a Tesla drive unit and we have a separate video for this. And I just wanted to show you, because we haven't done a video for quite a while, I just wanted to show you that we're, we're continuously working on this. Um, so what we're doing right now, if you take a look on the inside, I'm stripping down the complete wiring harness, which is really a challenge for me. Doing it for the little Swift was quite easy, but a BMW wiring harness is really a pain in the ass. And uh, yeah, this is what we're working on. So as soon as this is done, we'll get a paint job inside. We'll put in the complete roll cage and uh, we will get a full carbon fiber dashboard. Like we remove around about 25 kilograms with the dash and all the vent stuff inside and all that, all, all, all that things so which we will not place or, or put back in and uh, we will replace it by a two kilogram full carbon fiber dashboard and uh, yeah that's it so far so we will make an update video separately for this car and now let's come to the main topic and talk about the bump steer of a Toyota Supra which is undrivable as some of of, of the German YouTubers say. Okay, so what's the difference? I think in the last video we, we mentioned the last update of the car uh, that it has, it, it just ha had some different springs and uh, the uh, adjustable camber, bearing on the front, axle, etc. And uh, the difference now is that we put in some bushings for the sub rear frame, for the front axle and also for the differential. This was done by MT Motorsport. The guys did a great job. It was really, I came there and I didn't even have the time to check my mates and the, the complete subframe was already disassembled and lying on the floor and they were already changing the bushing. So really precise and really good work. Thanks a lot to the guys from MT Motorsport. A game changer I will explain to you why um, just when the car is inside the second thing is now we do have a KW Club Sport V3 suspension it's called V3 but it has only has two possibilities of adjustment and I don't know why it's called V3 but anyway it's a KW Club Sport um, also with the adjustable camber plates on the front and um, it's quite low yeah the car is now quite low on the front and on the rear and uh, I will put the car now on the reload scale because I want to know what the weight of the car is right now in this setup 
and uh, we also tested it on the racetrack and it works perfectly and um, yeah I'll, I will drive the car in and explain to you why bump steer is not a topic when it comes to the, to the Toyota Supra and in my opinion it's complete bullshit So, okay, so this is now a check up after the track day. Uh, we did, so what's the history? The history behind this is we did the bushings at AMT Motorsport. Right after that, I went on a track day in Spa and it was a huge difference. But what did I feel before? Um, I felt the following situation. Uh, the rear subframe, which I will show you just in a second, if we are on a top view, it looks something like this. Yeah, that's, that's the rear subframe and it has four main bushings. Those four bushings are connecting the chassis with the subframe and from the subframe itself um, you have the elements of the suspension like uh, the, the washer no, warte mal wishbone nein querlenker wishbone the wishbone for example so this means that every force which you get from from the wheels this means that every force you feel in the car goes through those main four bushings this means that all all the forces um, together from the from the wheels from the suspension and everything is transported from the main four bushings to the chassis okay now what we did is we changed those because they were very soft and now they are aluminum bushings from AMT Motorsport inside and uh, that there is no relative movement anymore what do I mean by relative movement so if we take the the ground or the connection between the ground and the tires this car has a huge grip level so the grip level is very good that means that if you are in the corner and the car is settling like for example the notch life where it goes up and down quite a lot the car settles in the corner then you feel that your tires already have grip and we are not running those tires here we are running a 9j 80 inch pro track rim with 265 wide yokohama tires a052 um, which have a huge, which have huge grip. Really, it's it's awesome. But as soon as the car settles, you feel that there is an offset position of the complete chassis. So you have the settlement of the tires. The grip is perfect. You are in the corner, and then all of a sudden, the chassis does a little movement. This means that the bushings here are working and pushing the complete chassis in one direction, although the tires already have massive grip the tires stay where they are and the chassis is moving after you have settled in the corner and you're ready for, to go full throttle again and this is i think what most of the people describe as bump steer which is which is just not there so the game changer was to change those four bushings as we can see here and you will also see in the clips for example here you can see them you see this black bushing here that was not aluminum before it was very soft and this here is the main subframe which I tried to draw which has four connection points here here and also on the other side here and the last one you can't see it's here so this is what completely changed the um, drivability of the car so that means that the relative movement was not there anymore but why did I still change the suspension because now I really felt what the suspension is doing and I felt that the suspension was um, did not do a proper job according to the grip level of the tires we have now and the second point is those bushings are a little bit shorter they are shorter and if you take a look at the geometry this means that the rear is higher it means that the car was lowered on the front and higher on the rear which automatically means that 
um, we d it wasn't well balanced anymore and it means that the tail was a little bit too light. So therefore I changed the suspension KW uh, Club Sport V3 and then we went on a track day in Sanford and now it's perfect. So the car is really running awesome. You can even change uh, the, all the Porsche Cayman guys. I just need a little bit more power. And um, here is also one thing that was a game changer for this car. It's the brake pads. We, have, we are running endless N39S brake pads on the front and on the rear, which are perfect. And a very good aspect of this brake pad is now, please take a look at the disc. So there are, there are no cracks. The disc looks really, looks really good after I think it's six or seven track days and you can also see here our our cooling maybe from here this, this is our own development um, our cooling is running now for more than one year it's redirecting the air and the outlet of the cooling is in the center of the disc which you can see from here Yes, and the only thing is, yeah, well, um, the hose, yeah, it has some, it has some holes, but I think this is fair enough for a complete year. And what we have to do now is, we have to set up a proper cooling for the rear. You you won't see it here, um, because the dust shield is is in uh, in between. But we saw that the inside of the brake pad is a lot more worn. Do you say worn? Well, in German it's verschlissen. The inside of the brake pad is more verschlissen than the outside. And this is a typical BMW issue, um, which means that the heat on the inside of the rear wheel is much higher than on the outside of the disc of the rear wheel. And therefore we have to make a proper cooling. We already did for M2 competition, M3 and M4. And uh, we could avoid this problem with this. And it seems that the Supra also needs it. And now, the last point of this video is, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm quite interested of the weight of the car, of the actual setup right now. Uh, we will run lighter wheels. So I think, yeah, we will save 10 or 15 kilogram. Uh, we have a full tank right now. And um, yeah, there is, there is otherwise no big changes except of the, of the bucket seats, which I will show you right now. So this is the total weight of the car, 1416 kg, which is okay for a car which has really everything you can buy for it. It's a head-up display and the big sound system and everything you, you don't need for the racetrack. Uh, so I'm very happy with the total weight with a full tank. And uh, so I think that we, if we do it series-wise, so if, if you're really building, building a track car, I uh, think that less than 1,300 kilograms are realistic, so 1,200 and something, which would be very good for this car. And what we can also see is that it is too heavy on the front left side. This is the worst case we could ever have, um, because um, you have to imagine that the driver is sitting also on the left side, means that this side usually gets even heavier. This means that I have to adjust the... Um, the suspension or the height of the suspension to get it well balanced back again and but this is not it's not much it's it's really um, I don't know maybe maybe one or two turns on the on the left front and then it should be well balanced again and in this case I'm quite happy with the weight I hope that you learned something and that the bump steer is not really an issue for this car it's just so if you so want it's the bushings they are really a game changer and if there are any questions or you, you didn't get what I was trying to explain in English because my English is not the best, I know that, um, please feel free to ask. And uh, about the interior, here it is. Here you can see that still everything is inside. So the weight is for an actual car from 2021, it's, it's okay. So the only difference is the bucket seats with our seat mount kits to sit as low as possible in the center without any offset in front of the steering, steering wheel. And um, yeah, the second modification was the brake cooling, um, the brake pads, and yeah, that, that's the last point. 
The biggest benefit of this car is the brake. It really works awesome. If you use um, a proper brake cooling, and I would always um, suggest to use the endless brake pads. I used it with this car, the, the M22 and the N39S. The M22 is also very well. It's more durable, but the initial bite is a little bit lower than the N39S. And so, brake-wise, the setup is awesome. I'm running around about three and a half degree of negative camber in the front and two and a half of negative camber in the rear. Um, I think I will um, uh, adjust it to three degree negative camber in the rear. I think this is a little bit better for the car. And that's it. And last but not least, but therefore we will also do another separate video. We are working on a swan neck hanging wing for this car. Based on the GT4 Porsche GT4 Cayman RS wing. And I think it will come in one or two weeks and then we will also do a separate video and show you um, the new wing. Yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching and uh, see you next time. Bye.